Before I begin my talk, I'd like to wish you all a happy Chinese New Year, or as some of you would say, Kung Hei Fa Choi, but I'm not here to butcher the Chinese language. I'm here to talk about great leaps forward and how they don't work. People need to be more patient and take things one step at a time, whether it's doing a project or planning a trip or even ordering some food. And someone who wasn't a fan of this method was Mao Zedong. 10,000 years is too long, do it in a day. And he said this in 1963, at a time of terrible famine throughout many parts of China. That was a, con a country that was desperate to industrialize and bring itself into the 20th century. And looking at China's economy now, you may say it was worth it in the end. However, the estimated death toll goes up to around 45 million people over six years alone, thus proving that his method of rushing rather than taking care is not a good one. And the reason why I chose to relate and refer to Mao is because it helps prove the point of my message. The message being that although skipping all the steps to get to your goal seems like success, there are many other consequences. And what I'm going to talk about is far more relatable to everyone in this theater than the rash advancement of China society. I'm going to talk about school. If you have any sort of goal, large or small, summative or formative, you have to take the first goal, or you have to take the first step that will lead you to that goal. Lao Tzu once said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Skipping all the steps and disregarding the process of learning can lead to utter chaos. And looking at the Great Leap Forward now, and looking at the consequences, it wasn't worth it in the end. For example, in 1958, millions of agricultural workers were moved to non-agrarian jobs, peaking at 50 million in 1960. And this was done in order to industrialize the nation. However, these diverted workers were most likely the more productive workers, which left the less skilled peasants to cultivate China's crop. This then led to the neglect of agricultural work, which then led to widespread famine. And you can apply this kind of idea to studying and cramming as well. You memorize a whole chapter of biology notes in six hours, rather than taking six days to do it, in order to get a passing grade on your quiz the next morning. However, you forget everything you've learned once it's time for the real exam. And you can apply this to daily activities as well. For example, you cheat on your driving test and you truly don't understand the highway code. However, you manage to pass and get your license anyway. And then once you get on the highway, you crash your car. And another example is you tell your friend you can run a marathon without properly tra training. However, seven minutes in, you get a stitch and collapse. Rushing things don't work. I previously mentioned um, or ordering food, and when I lived in England, I loved to order in Chinese takeout, especially on Chinese New Year. However, I always, get, I always got hungry waiting for the food to arrive because you need to call them, they need to take your order, cook the food, prepare it, deliver it to your doorstep. And this process usually took around 40 minutes and by that time I was ravenous. So one day I tried a new place and less than 10 minutes after I put the order in, my food had arrived. Now, uh, this is something extraordinary because I love Chinese food, but that was too quick because one of the processes or one of the steps must have been left out. Left out. So I just said, thanks, but no thanks. That was too quick, so I don't really want it. And um, the comedian John Oliver used this analogy to describe FIFA and its corruption in loopholes. And I'm using it to show you the effects loopholes can have. Who here has put together some shelving? Put your hand up, or at least watch someone do so. Okay, so those of you didn't, who didn't put your hands up, and Ikea's opened up about an hour away, and I think you should probably take a trip there. Um, <laughs> Who here has done it without instructions or lost some nuts and bolts along the way and thought, you know what, I can do it without those. It never works. So I don't understand why so many people think they can truly move forward efficiently and productively in school through constant cramming. So my advice to you and to myself is, once you've learned something, briefly go over it and then dip into it multiple times and in stages rather than trying to master a tidal wave of information over a short period of time. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day. Who here crowned for the end of semester exams? I know I did, and it never works for me, because the method makes it seem as if you truly understand what you need to know, but you don't because you forget it once you've walked out. And the knowledge you gain from cramming is short term, however the effects can be long lasting, such as exaggerated emotional reactions, impaired mental functions, inconsistent performance, and poor eating habits. And so 
When I began this talk, I think the this conference is obviously a great step forward. However, when I decided on my topic, I had misread it to be leap. So maybe that's an indication that I need to slow down and take things slow and stop rushing to reach success and rather take the ever important stepping stones that will lead me there in the end. And I know you get told by your teachers to finish this, finish that, there's a deadline, and increase your speed. And I know that's important, but so is increasing your productivity too. As well as being English, I'm also Indonesian, and I'd like to end my talk with an Indonesian proverb that goes like this. Sedikit sedikit lama lama menjadi bukit, which translates to taking it one step at a time. And if you apply this kind of attitude to your studies and maybe even your life, you will see the results you deserve without the repercussions of something that was as reckless and as hastily planned as the Great Leap Forward. Thank you.